iPhone 7 Plus versus iPad Pro 10.5 coming up right now. Let's go. So what is up guys? Nick here helping you to master your technology and welcome to the iPhone 7 Plus versus the iPad Pro 10.5. Now the 7 Plus is a smartphone, this is a tablet, so of course this isn't a fair comparison if you wanna look at it at that point, but we're making this one for fun just to see how good the A10 is compared to the A10X. And the A10X is the CPU that might be found in the upcoming iPhone 7S, I believe. So that don't quote me on that, but that would just make sense that they will put the A10X in the iPhone 7S, 7S Plus, and then put the A11 in the iPhone 8. But let's go ahead and see what happens here on the boot up in three, two, let's go. So three gigs of RAM there on the iPhone 7 Plus, four gigs of RAM here on the iPad Pro 10.5. I think this is gonna be a pretty close comparison. I do think the iPad is gonna boot up a little bit quicker than the 7 Plus, but we're gonna to have to see right here. The 7 Plus is probably the fastest smartphone I've ever used on the planet, but the OnePlus 3T and the OnePlus 5 are pretty close. But you can see the iPad did win over the 7 Plus just slightly on the boot up test. See, we are now in iOS 10.3.2 on both devices. Applications are closed out here. Now, just scrolling through the general user interface, the iPad and the iPhone are about similar in terms of this area. It is a little bit smoother, but where you really see the difference in smoothness is when you open up apps, scroll through content here on that 120 hertz refresh rate for the iPad. So let's go ahead and scroll through the notification tray. You can see just a little bit smoother there on the iPad. 120 hertz over here on the 10.5 edition. Now the 7 Plus does bring a couple things that the iPad doesn't. For example, I'm not sure why they didn't include the capacitive key here for the 10.5. This is still a click pressure, so you can hear. So that's still a click. Over here, it's more of a capacitive key. So it's a really nice click over here, force click, just like on the MacBook here. Now, if you go ahead and put your finger down, you do have 3D touch here for the iPhone 7 Plus. Again, not a feature found on the iPad Pro 10.5 here. But let's begin the speed test when it comes to the applications now. So let's start with calendar in three, two, one. And you can see calendar look to open first on the 7 Plus. Let me know what you think down below. Let's go into settings. And you can see it looked like the iPad Pro there. Coming home looks like the iPhone 7 Plus with its faster home key. Let's go into the clock. And you can see it looks like the iPad, but the 7 Plus goes home faster, so that might make up for the time difference. So let's go into App Store. Ooh, about the same, I think slightly to the 7 Plus. So the A10X not too much faster than the A10 it's showing right here. Let's go into Apple Clips. And you can see Apple Clips does open faster for the iPad. So let's go into Apple Pages. And Pages is ready to go first for, okay. We had to load that up there on the iPhone 7 Plus, but I'm sure it had been right about the same. Let's go into Instagram. You can go ahead and follow me on Instagram. Nick underscore Nick underscore Ackerman. I got the link down below in the description area of this video. I asked a question today, name the most productive smartphone you've ever had. Pretty interesting one. Coming home here, let's go into YouTube. And you can see YouTube looks first for, oh, that is so close. I think it might be the iPad though, but let me know down below. This is really hard to see, it's really close. Let's go into Snapchat on both devices and you can see Snapchat first for the iPad Pro. What about Amazon? Amazon, come on Amazon, what you got? A10X or A10? Looks like the A10. So it's not looking like if you're gonna be buying this as a companion device to your iPhone 7 or 7 Plus that you're getting a huge increase in performance. The performance is about the same and the cameras are about the same as well. Let's go into eBay and you can see eBay done first for the iPad maybe. Let's go into news. And news is ready to go first on the iPad easily. Coming home here, let me hit don't allow. And let's come home here. Let's go into real racing. So here's, we're gonna get to some gaming right here. We're gonna get to some gaming right here on both devices. So real racing, three, two, one. And you can see who's gonna load it first. Okay, it looks like the iPad is ahead here. So definitely an improvement in the GPU department here for the iPad. So we're still waiting on the 7 Plus. It's very similar though, not too much different, but definitely gonna be a more enjoyable experience, obviously on this larger screen here, but definitely about the same there. Let's go into 
<laughs> the iPhone 7 Plus. Like, I want to be an iPad today. Look at me. Ha <laughs> ha. So let me come back home here and let's go into War Machines. War Machines in three, two, one. See what happens here on War Machines. Again, the iPad's slightly ahead. So this is looking very promising for people who want to game on their iOS device. The iPad 10.5 is the way to go for that. Not that the iPhone 7 Plus playing uh, iPad down there again. Not that the 7 Plus doesn't want to game. It's a pretty good gamer as well. But I do think that you're going to have a better experience on the iPad Pro 10.5. Let's go into balls here. And balls is ready to go first for about the same. That's about dead even. So this is looking good. You're getting iPhone 7 performance in your tablet here with the iPad Pro 10.5. About the same as the 7 Plus. I do think the graphics are a little bit better. So a little bit more powerhouse here on the iPad Pro 10.5. Going into App Store on both of these devices shows that the iPad is the winner again. So let's go into the final one, which is the camera. And let's snap a quick picture here on both devices. So the iPhone 7 Plus had the focus, but both are going to give you burst mode. Both are very quick. So it's going to be a great picture taking experience on either. You do get the zoom functionality on the 7 Plus, and I do think more people will be taking pictures and stuff on the 7 Plus. But if you do shoot in the studio or something like that, or you do some macro photography, this is going to be a great camera for that reason right there, because you have the big viewfinder for macro photography, meaning that you get really close in on subjects, for example, like this. Bring that mic right there. So get really close in on subjects. It's gonna be nice to have that huge viewfinder to do that. Also, for people who want to shoot on an iPad stand on their tripod at home, this can be a really good thing. I think I said tripod, by the way. I'm thinking a little bit too much about iPad right now. So let's go ahead and run the multitasking now. So I'm gonna quickly just fly through these apps one more time to check the multitasking calendar. Coming home here, let's go into settings. Coming home here, let's go into clock. Coming home here, and both are as expected, holding these applications like a champ in the background. Let's go into clips. Clips are better on the iPad there. Pages, about the same. Let's go on Instagram, about the same. I think the iPad was a bit quicker to load the notifications. About the same. Snapchat, looks like the iPad. Amazon, looks like the iPad there. eBay, looks like the iPad slightly there. News, I can see this very slightly that the iPad is just a little bit better in all areas and performance than the iPhone 7 Plus. It's just a little bit better. It's very slight. You got to have an eye to see this. And I'm sure some of you are seeing that the iPad is just a little bit better here on the performance. Let's go into Subway Surfers. It looks like the iPad that had to reload there for the 7 Plus. Let's go into Apple Store. And let's go into Camera. Missed that one on the 7 Plus. Let's do that one more time on the 7 Plus on the camera. And you can see iPad just a little bit faster again. So the iPad A10X chip is amazing. All right, guys. So now let's go ahead and do a browser test on both devices and see what happens here. So if I do go into this guy and I go like so and I go like so, we're going to go to Apple.com. Let's just hit the Apple.com logo here. And you can see the iPad just a little bit faster, but I mean, it's really minor. The iPhone 7 Plus is like the iPhone version of this iPad right now. Let's go into, hmm, let's go into CNET, for example. Going into CNET, you can see right here, the iPad is first, coming home here. iPhone 7 first to the home screen every time. All right, guys, so one last thing I wanna do is run the Geekbench test to see the performance scores. The iPad is just benching ridiculously high right now, but how high is it benching in comparison to the iPhone 7 Plus? Let's hit run benchmark, and I will be back once this test is done. All right, guys, so the scores are in, and we got a 3490 on the single core and a 3925 on the single core for the iPad. So what this is basically saying is that if you're performing light tasks, the iPhone 7 and the iPad Pro are going to be about the same. But if you start getting into the heavier things, you can see a 5971 on the iPhone, which is still incredible, pretty close to a lot of entry-level PCs here on the iPhone 7 Plus. 9218 is just going to be better when it comes to more graphically intensive things or if you're doing some Photoshop kind of stuff, maybe an Infinity Photo or something like that. So definitely, definitely two powerhouses right here. If you're looking to put the iPad Pro 10.5 as a companion device to your iPhone 7 Plus, it's gonna be in a fantastic one. This combination right here is just a beast. As a matter of fact, 
if you're not a heavy computer user, you could probably get away with you using just this and this phone as your main computing needs. Even the Apple iPad could even print now. You got Air Print. You can also, you know, type out documents on Pages or Microsoft Word. They got the whole Microsoft suite on here as well. You can edit 4K video on the iPad Pro. There's just a lot you can do on this guy, meaning that it could potentially replace a PC. You just got to know the workarounds when it comes to a adapters. And I would recommend if you are going to be doing that with an iPad to go ahead and get the highest capacity storage that you can squeeze into your budget. Anyway, this was Nick here helping you to master your technology. This was just a fun video to see the A10 performance versus the A10X. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to see more odd comparisons like this. Anyway, have a great day wherever you are. Nick here. Be sure to be well and peace.